Okay, so now what happens next, right, is we're going to come over here and we're going to find our first column that we want to adjust, move our mouse over until the two arrows appear, because we need the two arrows to appear, otherwise it won't really adjust. And then hold down on the left mouse, and if it clicks off, that means you're not on it. See how I just clicked off and it wasn't on it? So in that case, just click back again, bring it back up, make sure you're on your column, and you want to get those two arrows. And then once you do that, hold down on the left button, left mouse, and you guys see where I'm on the gray? Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down to where it's half, and bam, that's half an inch. Okay, now come back and do it for the other ones too. So I'm going to come back and click on this one. And now I'm going to start over here. You guys see I'm starting at 6. And so I'm going to bring it down. Whoop, whoop, let me click on it again. There we go. Holding down on the left mouse as I click on it, bring it to half, and bam, just like that. Okay, now come back down to the last quantity and click on that column. There it is right over there. And we can see it goes from 3 to 4. Hold down on the left, um, 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 bring the mouse up until you get the two arrows between the two gray bars. Hold down on the left mouse button and drag it drag it drag it to half and boom just like that now you've got it adjusted let's see how much cleaner it is in terms of space and how much space we saved excellent look at that much cleaner there's quantity there's quantity over there there's quantity over there oh i think it's all starting to come together now at this point okay you probably want to jump on it now and just like oh i want to go but please let me teach you a few more things here you've almost got this and we're going to build on this considerably in inside later labs plus you know, one day I have to do a power view series, so, you know, this is good to know. All right, now, here we go. In the next part over here, though, we start to notice something. Look at this ugly thing in our report over here. Look at this ugly four, four different squares right over here. That's ugly. I don't like that. That's extremely ugly. And your users won't like that either, and they'll complain about it, right? Wouldn't it be nice if we could at least, I don't know, make it all go into just one cell instead of having four different, four different cells? Of course we can. We just need to merge it, right? And we can even give it a color at that point, so then it looks as, like it's part of the report. Let's make this these four ugly cells part of the report now. So I'm going to click Design first. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all four of them. So I'm just going to hold down on Shift in this case and, and use my arrow to go one, one over to the right and then, and, and then hit the down arrow to go one down. And that highlights all of them. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to right-click on these, and then I'm going to left-click on Merge Cells. Now, once I do merge cells, notice how I've got pure white over here. Okay, that's a lot better. The thing is, though, I also needed to be able to actually match the color coding of my report, right? So how do I get it to match the color coding of my report? Easy. Remember those text box properties? Just give it a fill color, and that'll fill all this in with some sort of color. So in this case, inside the lab, they give us a hexadecimal code that actually corresponds to our slate, um, to, our actual, to our actual slate color style, which is gray-blue. So I'm going to right-click over here. Then I'm going to come, come down once I right-click over there, right? And whoops, let me just click off for a moment and then come back and right-click now. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over and click on Text Box Properties. And now on Text Box Properties, I'm going to click on Fill. And then once I choose Fill right over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to choose FX. So I'm going to use a formula to give it a fill. And instead of no color, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to instead just turn around and just type in O oh, instead of an equal even, just a pound. And then I'm going to give it a 9, 6, A, 4, B, 2, which is essentially going to be the grayish, um, the hexadecimal code for a grayish, grayish, bluish color. And I hit OK. And I'm going to hit OK. And there. Now that looks much, much cleaner. Let me click Run. There's Run right over there. And look at that. Now it's starting to come together and starting to look a lot better. Okay. Now the next thing, thing that we haven't seen was in the, in, in the past, we saw how we actually added a text box to make a report header. However, though, sometimes what we want to do is we want to add a real report header and actually make it look nice. So in this particular case, I'm going to click on design. And I'm going to try to give it some sort of header that looks a lot better. So this time, when I click on design, I'm going to click on the text box, the default text box that says click to add to title. And I'm going to hit delete. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to hit delete over there. Instead, I want an entire header section that appears on every single page. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come over and I'm going to click insert right over here. And then once I come down to insert, there's a section called header right over here. So of course, as you guys can guess, I'm, I'm, I'm going to click on the header and then I'm going to click add header. And look at that. Now I've actually got a header on the actual report. 
Okay, now once I've got my header, now that looks a lot better. I've got a predefined region and anything I put in here, logos, images, all that kinds of stuff is gonna stay with the report. So it's gonna, it's gonna, continue, the, it's gonna continue the look and feel, which is exactly what I want. All right, now what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna also add one more thing from insert. And notice how the insert tab gives us the ability to insert all these look and feels. I'm gonna put a text box on it. So just insert text box right over there. And then it brings a text box and I had to double click on it to bring it down, but I did that. Then I bring it up to the top and you guys see these little blue lines, that's keeping the alignment. That's, a, that's an automated feature, so to speak. You can change it, of course, by dragging it up and down, but you know, it's your call. And now once I'm on the text box right over here, it asked me to make it about six inches long. So starting from the beginning of the ruler, I'm gonna highlight this and keep going. And you guys see the ruler moving, see the ruler moving. And I'm gonna keep going down to six and voila, bam, just like that. So now I've actually got it at about six right over there. And then it asked me to make it, oh, about, you know, what is it? What is it about half an inch long or, or about an inch, about an inch long, something somewhere, somewhere in there or three fourth inches tall. So I'll go down to three fourths, whatever I estimate. So there's half right over there. And then this is a little bit over half a little bit. So I'll leave it about right there. I think that's pretty good. Could make it longer if I wanted to. Now I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna give it some text. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna type in a text over here for a label like sales by territory, subcategory, and day. Then what I'm gonna do over here is once I'm inside of there, right? I'm gonna go ahead and use the properties window to change it. So I'm gonna click in the text box. And then if you don't see this properties window, this is the properties window. This is where you can apply all those settings at once. I mean, and you can and you can change pretty much, you know, anything that your users want almost. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click view. And then if I click on the properties, it'll make this window display or, un, or not display. When it's checked, the window displays. When it's unchecked, the window not, is not displaying. So I'm gonna check it to make it display. And now once I'm inside properties, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here to the actual, um, I'm going to come over here to the actual text in this, in, in this particular case. So I'm going to come over here to the actual text properties and I'm going to find font. So here's font right over here. And then for the color, instead of black, I'm going to click the down arrow. I'm going to click more colors and I'm going to find maroon. Now I could have just found maroon right in there also, but figured I'd do it this way. So I'll click maroon right over here and click OK. And now the text changes to maroon as, like it shows me. The other thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to change the font and a few other things. So I'm going to click on the font list. You guys can all see that over here. So I click the little arrow to make it display on the bottom. And then what I'm going to do over here is on the font size, I'm going to change it to, I'm, I'm going to change it over here to 24 types. So I click the little down arrow. There's an expression I can give it to make it custom. Instead of that, I'll come in and I'll just go ahead, go ahead and type in 24. We'll get to expressions later where you'll change things like colors or make fonts appear bigger depending upon certain values or whatever in order to adjust your user's eyes to certain things. Under font style over here, I can come over here and I can actually select italic or type it in. I'll just select it. There we go. And now I've got italic font. Now this is still a little bit too small because I didn't quite make it three-fourths all the way. So I'll come down just a little bit and that should give me my three-fourths edge right over there. Okay. So sales by territory, subcategory, and day. Now let me click run. So come back to home, go to run, and look at that. Now it's starting to look somewhat like a real report. Okay, now there's one other thing I, I wanna do though. And there's one other thing they have over here that you do be, um, before we turn around and save it to SharePoint and then you know access it from there. You can take these reports and sometimes you'll see things like this, like you'll see one of these, one of these categories and you'll look and you'll see that the column is eating up way too much space, so to speak. And you'll be looking at it like, God, you know what? Is there a way I could make this a value appear down or, or I can make central appear vertically rather than horizontally? This is known as, this is, this is known for writing mode essentially, where you basically say, make things not appear horizontally, but vertically. This was an optional section, but we'll go ahead and do it here just to kind of show it because it can help with dashboards to sometimes make columns a lot thinner. So I'm gonna click design. Now on design, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on the actual territory cell right over here. So here's my territory cell right over here. Then I'm gonna come down to the properties panel right over here. 
and inside of the properties panel I'm going to find a, a value under localization called writing mode and I'm going to change writing mode right over here to rotate 270. Now once writing mode is at rotate 270 what I'm going to do next is what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make sure that the can grow value is set to true. What that means is it can expand horizontally without you know um, the column can expand horizontally or at least the row can expand horizontally um, so that so that that way your text doesn't run out. Okay. Now what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to change this territory column and cut it in half on its size. So I'm just going to click over here, come back to territory, and I'm going to move it. to half its size over here essentially so just changing it to half its size right over there and now what I'm gonna do over here is there's my territory over there I, I never did re change its name because I just wanted to show this particular part um, I'm gonna click run and watch how the territory values display now look at that over there see how that's more compact south north central pretty pretty cool definitely um, cool little tip for being able to get a get an SSRS dashboard going and guys we've built a report we have actually built a report so okay one other thing to do and that's send it back up to SharePoint well I'd, we already launched it from SharePoint at first so all I have to do over here is come back again file right and then I'll just go ahead and click first save it'll ask me where I want to save it as normal there's reports and I'll call this our matrix report and I will save it right now inside of reports and whoops double click over there there we go now it'll save it in there there we go and now it's saving it inside the matrix report so I'm gonna come back and click back on my reports library double check it there's the matrix report now the final step um, is just to take a look at it so I'll just click on matrix report and ta-da, look at that. It's displaying within the browser, within SharePoint. Does this in 2010 or 2013. Expand that out and look at that. Expand that out and look at that. And expand that out and look at that. And, and look at that dynamic browser-based reporting, guys. This is what it's all about for your users. Ability to be able to print it up. I would say we've done extremely well. All right, that's it from Brandon. Hope you guys like, these, um, like this tutorial a lot. Tomorrow I'll do an tomorrow I'll do another one um, as we continue to go through this 13 part series. But by the end of this, and stick with me, guys, um, if you watch the lectures and you do the labs, you will you will know a very powerful reporting tool, and you'll know how to write reports in SQL Server. And I'll teach you some things on how to write reports in journal, as you can see. So look forward to it a lot, and have a very very good day.